worship and hear the word of God. Thus says the Lord, do not fear, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you pass through the fire, you shall not be consumed, and the flame shall not burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Let us begin by singing together in the Black Hymnal 198, Lift High the Cross. Church of Christ Congregational here in Newington, Connecticut. As a part of the United Church of Christ, we believe that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So indeed, we welcome 
everyone here for this special Sunday as today is rally day. It's the day we kick off our church school program for the year. So church school begins, our youth group begins. We're delighted to have our choir with us here and the choirs begin. So it's good to be together. I'm delighted to be with all of you um, after a wonderful summer. So it's good to kind of go into the next season. As my son would say, it's a great day to have a great day. <laughs> We'd like to welcome the visitors that we have among us, uh, those that are here in person and those who are watching online. And at this time, we give a wave of welcome to everyone around us and also those online with us. We're delighted to be together today. We invite you to uh, read the bulletin. There are a lot of good announcements in the bulletin. One announcement that I want to call attention to is the importance of church school registration forms. We have registration forms on the back table in the narthex, and the church school teachers also have registration forms. And we want everybody to fill out this form if you haven't already. Um, we need it every year, and just in case there's updates that need to have happen, it's really important for us to have any updated information. We need a registration form for each child that you have. Um, so there are some on the back table. So if parents or caregivers or grandparents can please attend to that. We also sent it out in the uh, email blast that went out. Um, there's an online form, and I will be sending it out again this week if you forget. Um, so we just invite all of you to make sure you fill out the registration form. Um, invite you to read um, the rest of the announcements. And at this time, we gather in worship to give God thanks and praise. responsive call to worship. Mighty God, we call on you for help. We try to sort it out on our own, but we don't have the answers. We thank you for reminding us of your greatness. Jesus is our superhero. Let us pray. Mighty Savior, we give thanks to you for all the ways you show us your greatness. You are our hero, wise and undefeated. You are never far away. Your cape of love blows through the wind covering us, binding us together, protecting us from the power of hate. We feel you flying over us, in us and through us. We are your sidekicks, probed with a mission to spread good in the world around us. Continue to save us, watch over us, and lead us safely on. We pray as your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today is the beginning of our faith formation program. Every year, the Christian Education Board works diligently, ordering curriculum, arranging classes, finding teachers and staff to help on Sunday mornings and for special events. We also have a strong youth program that kicks off today. This is a huge part of who we are as a community of faith. 
We love having all the kids with us, kids of all ages, from the little ones to the older ones. And our prayer is that these kids will know that this is a community where they are valued, where they are loved, and that this is a safe place for them to belong. This year, the theme for our church school is Jesus is our superhero, as I hope you can tell, and we are going to have fun with it this year. I mean, who can forget the words of a dying Uncle Ben to Spider-Man? With great power comes great responsibility. These are words of wisdom Spider-Man takes to heart and lives by. And the same goes for us. As we gain power, we have the opportunity to make decisions that shape the world we live in. Yes, sometimes we can be selfish and short-sighted, but great leaders in the world know that responsibility requires the opposite. It requires diligence and humility and generosity and thoughtfulness. And no matter what happened in Spider-Man's world, he remained humble and lived by his uncle's words. I think it's true for us here as well. We have the potential to change through our faith, to change lives through our faith formation program. And we need plenty of people to step up and help, both on Sunday mornings and with our youth group. And we are asking you. The, the ask is pretty small. Sometimes we just need a Sunday for you to be a second in the classroom because we practice kind of this safe church where we need two people in every single classroom, and we have four classrooms. So sometimes we need a second adult or a second teenager to be there. And we asking you to maybe help with our youth program once a month that you could help out on a Sunday evening. If perhaps you feel called to do this or you're willing to say yes, we invite you to use the sign-up card that's found in each pew where it says sign up. Just put your name down. You can throw it in the, you know, on the back table. You can give it to me after the service. Or you can sign up online, you can sign up in the back in the narthex, that we really need people to help us continue to have a strong youth program and to have a strong faith formation program overall. And at this time, I would like us to take a moment just to pray, to dedicate our teachers and the CE board and all of the children among us, if you'll join with me in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for all the children and youth in this congregation those with us here today and those not able to attend. Bless them, O oh God, and surround them with strength and a sense of your peace. Allow them to know of your encircling love that knows no bounds. And help us all to live with kindness and generosity. We thank you for the people coming forward to help with our children and youth. Give them direction and guidance. We ask you to bless our Sunday school teachers, our helpers, the CE board, our youth advisors. Sustain them and all of us in your grace. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. And at this time, we invite all the children to come forward for this children's sermon. And if you have a prayer request that you would like included in our pastoral prayer today, please write it on a prayer slip found in the pew and then pass it to the aisle and a deacon will come and collect them. Good morning. Come on down. Have a seat. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Yeah? That didn't sound very good. It sounded kind of blah. How are you doing today? Yeah, that sounded a lot better. So we were just talking about our theme this year. And who remembers what the theme is? You can look at the sign back here if you don't remember. What's our theme? I know you know, John. What's our theme? Jesus is our superhero. That's right. Uh, that's our theme. And what is a superhero? Ella, what's a superhero? Um, somebody who has special powers, right? And what do they do with those special powers? What do they do? Do they help us? Yeah, yeah, do they use them for good? What, what else is a superhero? They fight crime, right, right, yeah. What else, Jason, you have something? What's a superhero? What are they, what makes them special? 
They help us, right? And they protect us and they keep us safe. <coughs> who's your favorite superhero? Somebody raise your hand and tell me, who's your favorite superhero? Spider-Man? Iron Man, yeah, that's a good one. Who's your superhero? Batman. Batman. Another Batman. Spider-Man. Iron Man? Uh, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, all right. I was waiting for a Wonder Woman. Who's your favorite superhero? Spider-Man, right. They all have special talents, and they do what? They help us. There's one that I didn't hear mentioned. Who else is a superhero for us? Who? Captain America. Good, okay. Who else? Who else is a superhero for us? Jesus, yeah. Jesus. Why is Jesus a superhero? He heals people, that's right. He's got great powers and he can heal people, right? And what else does he do? Flash and Superman. Yeah, Superman. How can we forget Superman, right? All right, but what else does Jesus do to help us? What else does Jesus do? What does he do? He does. And, and he prays for us? What else does he do? Oh, there, there's a ton of superheroes. I know we didn't mention them all. Okay. So let's talk about Jesus, though. What else does Jesus do to help us and to be a superhero? I know, superheroes are so exciting. It's so exciting. What else does Jesus do? Uh, yeah, and, and what about, what did Jesus do? I remember at the end, and what did he do on the cross? You don't remember. What did he do on the cross? He died and he came back to life, right? What a superpower that is, right? That's pretty cool. Can you imagine that? And he did all of that for us so that he uh, could, could give us the power and so that we could be children of God and we could be in God's kingdom. So Jesus did all of that for us. And so that's why I think that Jesus is my superhero. Not only is he pretty cool, but he did all those amazing things, and he did it all for us. And so I want to say, I want to hear you say that Jesus is your superhero. So let's, all together, I want to hear you say, Jesus is my superhero. Okay, ready? Jesus is my superhero. What? I didn't hear you say that. What was that? Jesus is my superhero. I still can't hear you. Those people all the way in the back can't hear Say it again, nice and loud. Jesus. Awesome. That's great. Thank you. And before I let you go, yeah, keep around. That's awesome. Before I let you go to church school, I'm going to also repeat what Reverend Melanie said. You all here have an opportunity to be a superhero, too, to these amazing children. We are looking for helpers in our classrooms once a week. If you can do it just once, if you can do it more often, there's lots of opportunities. So please take, take this opportunity to be a superhero because I want you to join all of us in, in uh, you know, recognizing that Jesus is a superhero and, and to be a superhero. Okay, so um, we're going to dismiss by grades. So, I'm just pulling out my list here. If you are in grade six and seven, and some of you are probably out there, you're gonna go upstairs to room 202. Uh, and all the children will be downstairs in Fellowship Hall. So if you're, the, you're unfamiliar with how we do this, you'll just go downstairs to Fellowship Hall and all the children will be downstairs. If you are in grades four and five, you're gonna go upstairs to room 201, grades four and five. What grade are you in? Okay, have a seat, not yet. Fourth grade, fifth grade, okay. If you are, I'm gonna skip around here. If you are preschool, so if you are in, uh, three years old, four years old, or in kindergarten, you can get up and go in the back and, and preschool. So three year, four year, I'm gonna go with Miss Conchetta back there in the purple shirt. Three, and kindergarten. All right, everybody else that's
that's here. You are going to be with me upstairs, grades one, two, and three. Are you in grade four? Yes. You're in third grade. All right, Max, you're with me. All right, so we're going to stand up and we're going to go and uh, go to Cliffside Church School. All right. Good morning. We open the Bible and ask God to shed light on the readings of God's Word. Genesis chapter 2, verses 4b through 25. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no vegetation of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground, but a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God 
made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, and they were not ashamed. The word of God for the people of God. around me close songs in the night it giveth I hear the real though far off him that hails a new creation that sounds an echo in my soul all above earth's lamentation Keep on singing now. 
Teresa diagnosed the world's ills in this way. We've just forgotten that we belong to each other. Now isn't this quote true? That we've forgotten that we belong to each other. I mean, we were created to be in relationship. Relationship with God, relationship with the earth, and relationship with each other. But too often, we forget. We forget this, and when we do, life breaks down. And there is disconnection and dis-ease. There's no justice, no peace, and no rest. And certainly, as we look around the world, we can see that there is unrest, and there is injustice, and p plenty of people live with loneliness. So our world has broken down. So today, I thought in our brokenness that it's a good idea to go back to the beginning and to see what we can learn. In the first chapters of the Bible in Genesis, we read the creation stories. There are actually two different creation stories in the Bible. The first is in chapter 1, and we know this story is kind of the seven days of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and then it's very structured, all very orderly, with the supreme being creating the world through the power of word. Then in chapter 2, beginning in verse 4, we hear this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Now, by examining these two stories, it's clear that there were two, at least, two different authors. In chapter 2, God is much more involved, more relational, kind of an improvising God, one who creates through action. In this chapter, we are given the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Eden including the tree of good and evil. Now, we must remember that these stories are very, very, very old. These stories were passed down from one generation to another through oral tradition. That means they were sitting around the table, they were sitting around the campfire, and they were telling these stories to one another. The people were trying to understand who they were and how things that they, that how things that were seen, known, and imagined came to be. They were trying to understand who they were in relation to the earth, to God, and to each other. Chapter 2 emphasizes that we were created to be in relationship, that we live in partnership with God, with the earth, and with one another. As Mother Teresa said, we belong to one another. Chapter 2 begins by saying, when God creating the heavens and the earth, there was no plant in the field and no herbs. The earth needed water and someone to work the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust, kind of got down there in the dirt and in that dust and formed this man. And then God breathed into his nostrils the breath of of life. And hence, the man became a living being. Now, the living being, then, is connected to the ground as he was formed by the dust and the dirt. And at the same time, this man is connected to God because it was God who breathed life, the breath of life, into him. 
Then the Lord God planted the Garden of Eden and created the trees, including the tree of good and evil. And the Lord God took the man and put the man in the garden to till it and keep it. Now the man was created from the earth, yet at the same time, the earth depends upon the man to work the land and to produce. Again, there's a partnership between man and the earth. We need one another, and we need our earth. We belong to one another. In this story, we see how God is present, caring, and attentive. And God saw right away that it's not good for man to be alone. And God addressed the problem immediately. And God said, I will make him a helper as his partner. So, out of the ground, the Lord God went to work again and formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air. And man got to name them all. But even though the animals were wonderful, and some of them were pretty funny, some were a little scary and creepy, they were not the partner that the man was looking for. They were not the companion that he was longing for. So then God improvised, and God said, you know, I have another idea. And God caused a deep sleep to come over the man and took a rib and formed another living being. And when the woman came to me, the man, gosh, this at last is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. This at last is a person that I can talk to and spend time with and laugh with and share life together with. They were better together than apart. They were true partners. Now, I do want to pause for a moment and note that over the years, people have interpreted these verses to mean that there was some sort of hierarchy. They translate the Hebrew word God uses for helper to mean kind of an assistant or someone less skilled. I don't get that at all. For in Genesis and the other biblical texts, that same Hebrew word for helper is very often connected to the divine. As we say, the Lord is my helper. The helper is not a second-class citizen. Rather, this helpmate is an equal. So two people live together in partnership. They need each other to become more fully who God created them to be. This helper is intended to be an equal partner. The problem, really, is the tree in the garden. The humans were granted um, freedom in the garden. They just had one boundary they needed to abide by. They, permitted, they were permitted to eat from every tree in the garden except for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And as we know, this temptation proved to be too much. One wonders if what is at stake here is greed and overconsumption. We would rather be in control, to be in positions of authority, rather than living with mutuality and acknowledging that God is our creator and sustainer of all. Then we hear in chapter 3 that God asked the man, after the man had eaten the apple, if he did indeed eat the apple. And this man, who had just said, oh, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh, quickly changed his tune and said, she made me do it, that person that you gave to me. And the blame game begins. We forget as Mother Teresa said, that we belong to one another. Now, one of the lessons that we try to teach our kids, both, I think, in our homes and in church school, is that we need to help each other, you know, and be a good friend and share with one another. And since today is Rally Sunday and our theme for church school is Jesus is my superhero, perhaps we can learn a few things about living in partnership from various superheroes. 
From my reading, all, super, all superheroes believe in the greater good, and they strive to be altruistic. They perform good deeds and make great sacrifices on behalf of others. Yet however bright and mighty they may be, they do not try to rule over people, even for their own good. They become models of coping with adversity and discovering their strengths and using them to benefit the wider community. Take, for example, the X-Men. Now, these X-Men are not all men, just so you know. They are mutant outcasts of, from humanity, and they face all kinds of prejudice. Yet they face the conflict head on. Professor X and his trusty followers acknowledge their differences, yet they believe in themselves and they go out to prove that they are worthy of being called humans. The X-Men teach us to accept us, to accept ourselves for who we are, and to not let fear or anger or resentment drive our decisions. Captain America always embodies his core principles of who he is. He lives in a sense of self-authenticity. -authent he, he lives with passion and courage, loyalty, perseverance. He fights for honor and justice and truth. And in a world where it's cooler to be kind of the angry, hardcore guy, this first Avenger teaches us good morality and to be true to ourselves. As the old saying goes, God doesn't make junk. We also learn from our superheroes that every superhero also has a weakness. They are not perfect. So they are stronger together. Marvel heroes <clears throat> often team up to combine their strengths when faced with overwhelming odds. They teach us that we are stronger together and we belong to one another. And it's important to recognize our own strengths and weaknesses, and then when we are challenged or in need, to enlist the help of our fellow sojourners. It's also important to note that when a new superhero is created, the story often begins by explaining how the superhero got their power. For example, Wonder Woman is an Amazon a race of female warriors in Greek mythology. For the purpose of, Wonder, of the Wonder Woman character, it was the Greek gods who gave her her powers. And this reminds me then of our creation story, of how God breathed life into the dust of the earth, and how that breath of God continues to enable us to live today. Our creation story explains how we get our powers. We gain our strength, our compassion, our courage, our perseverance from our creator, from our God who loves us unconditionally. It's important for us to continually tap into our creator's power and to allow this breath of life to infuse our lives and our hearts and our minds, to allow this breath of God to guide us and to lead us, to tap into the power that's transforming, to become the community that in God intends us to be. And as we do so, we too can stand up to injustice. We too can help those in need, and we too can make a difference in this world. We just have to remember that we belong to one another and we belong to God. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to God in prayer at this time. O oh God, who holds each one of us, we lift our hearts in prayer to you. And we pray for the students around the globe who have started a new school year, 
Help the students, educators, and grown-ups who raise children and navigate the busier season and the additional stress that may bring. This time of year brings additional tasks for most of us and the sudden change of pace can cause anxiety. With all the changes and challenges we face, we often think, how can we possibly manage this? And these times remind us, O oh God, that you are there beside us, holding the burden with us. And during this time, may we find moments of joy in the regathering with friends and communities we missed over the time apart, knowing that in the outstretched arms of those we care about, you are there wrapping us in your love. As we turn our hearts and minds to the extreme weather, we pray for th southern Brazil, where a cyclone and its aftermath left at least 27 dead and thousands forced from their homes. And as flooding has taken over so many different countries, we pray for those in that destructive area. And today our hearts break for those in Morocco who suffered a terrible earthquake, leaving thousands dead. God, allow your presence to be felt. May you reach out your hands through the helping hands of those who aid all who have been impacted. And as we turn our hearts and minds to conflict, we pray for Ukraine, where at least 17 have been killed in a missile attack in a market and many others have been wounded. May your strong arms of justice bring about the kind of change that leads to peace. And O oh God, as you hold each one of us, help us to feel your presence, a presence that brings more moments of hope, more moments of joy, and a life-changing understanding of what love is. We thank you that for Lad Bethoon uh, prayers have been answered, his surgery went well, and he is recovering well. We thank you, O oh God, when you answer prayers and that you're with us. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. As we come to worship today, we don't come alone. We come with Christians all around the world in congregations, large and small, speaking every language and speaking one language. We come to remember that we belong to one another. Our offering today is connected to the work of the church in every corner of creation. Beginning today, we are starting our church school programs. By giving to this church, you enable us to invest in the children in this community and in the wider community. You allow us to invest in the children's home in Haiti. So while we support our children here, we also support the children in Haiti in the children's home we support. So let us give generously. We are a faithful community. We love generously. We serve generously. And we give generously. You may give online at newingtonucc.org, or you may give following the service in the offering plates in the narthex. We thank you for each and every contribution.
Accept our gifts, O God. May they honor and glorify you in all creation. And may they empower us for the work of witness and service, for the sake of justice, and for the sake of peace, now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. 